At the beginning of the war, the Anzacs were all volunteers, but by the end of it, the Australians were the only full volunteer force remaining in the conflict. The Australian officers weren't professional soldiers either, and they were under the overall command of British superiors. For a hundred years, debate has raised as to whether their commanders could have managed the war more effectively. Were they, in fact, competent men forced to learn on the job, or were they just donkeys leading the lions with outdated tactics? By 1916, when the Anzacs began arriving on the Western Front, commanders were thinking about new ways and new tools for breaking the trench deadlock. Artillery techniques were being developed, tanks were being developed. At the minor tactical level, trench raids had become commonplace on both sides. They sought to test the opposing defences, identify opposing units, and to capture prisoners who might reveal intelligence that would be useful in the big battles to come. On the 30th of May, the Germans struck the 11th Battalion from Western Australia in a well-planned and superbly executed raid here at Lacadonnery Farm, just west of Wagrenia. The 1st Battalion raised in Queensland, the 9th, was also affected. Both battalions had been among the first ashore at Anzac, but that experience seemed a long way off here. The Australians had received a short, sharp lesson in just how aggressive and skillful the Germans could be. The Australians lost 130 men, the Germans only eight, and six of those occurred when one of their own grenades exploded accidentally. On the 6th of June, the Australians launched a raid of their own. A 66-strong party attacked in the area of Boy Grenier on what Captain Alexander Ellis later wrote in his diary was a flat, dank piece of ground about 50 feet above sea level, which pretty much sums up the best part of the Western Front. Not all men kept personal diaries like Alexander Ellis, but all units from battalion level up kept official diaries that gave accounts of what it was really like on the ground. And of that first Australian offensive action, the War Diary of the 28th said, day quiet. Our raid on enemy trenches took place. Result of raid, two prisoners taken, about 12 killed and one seriously wounded. The cost of the battalion, three killed, 18 wounded. Ten days later, the New Zealanders launched their first raid. More raids were now being launched in response to the requirement of General Sir Douglas Haig, the British Commander-in-Chief, for an increased offensive tempo to deter the Germans from sending troops from this area further to the south, where a great Anglo-French offensive had been planned for the summer. In one of those raids on the 25th of June, William Jackson of the 17th Battalion, New South Wales, brought in wounded, incredibly had his arm blown off above the elbow and went out and brought two more comrades in. He was awarded Australia's first Victoria Cross of the Western Front and at 18 remains our youngest ever recipient. 